Hi, this is a, um, uh, a video to have a look at um, bisection. So bisection, and what we're going to think about first is to use it as a numerical method to find a place where f of x is equal to zero to find the root of a function. So, um, so for this, if we have a function where we have x and f of x, then we might have some function like this. And we may want to find uh, this place uh, here. Um, we might want to find this place here where um, the, uh, the uh, function crosses the x-axis. Now, uh, the way that uh, bisection works is that we start with a um, let's say a high value here and we'll have a uh, a lower value here and so what we're doing is we're starting and we know that f of x high is in this case positive and f of x low is negative. So we know that provided there are no discontinuities in the graph, provided that the function is continuous between low and high, at some point it's going to have to cross the axis where f of x equals zero. So um, what we do in this method is we find a, uh, a midpoint between these two. So a midpoint is going to be somewhere roughly around here. And we'll call it a test point. Now this test point give us, us a value of f of x here, which is positive. So what we're going to say, first of all, is x test, test value, is going to be the average of the high and the low, divided by 2, like this. And, but now, we say x test, or rather function of x test, is positive. So what we want to do is say that now our x high value is equal to x test. And now we're going to repeat this um, uh, method again. So, see if I can sketch the same function, more or less. So now our high value is here. and our low value is still here. And we do exactly the same procedure. We find um, the test value with exactly the same uh, formula. And so we'll get some sort of test value here. And in this case, F, okay, I should label that as X test there. 
f of x test is negative and so now we want to say that the new low value we want to move the low value up we move the high value down to there now we can move the low value up and say that it's equal to x test okay i'm going to draw one more time through So now, this is our low value, this is our high value, and the next test will be made uh, about, about here or something. So I hope what is um, obvious is with this method, we sort of zoom in, we reduce the gap between low and high, and it keeps getting closer. So if we were to draw um, a number line of x values, we maybe start with a low value here and a high value here, and we test, And then that becomes, say, the high value. And so we test here. And say that becomes the low value. And now we know that the, um, the range is somewhere between here and here in terms of our X scale. And if we repeat this, method for many iterations eventually we'll get to a position where low and high get so close to each other that it really uh, makes no uh, difference and um, we, we've sort of zoomed into our, our final uh, number so uh, this is a method which you can use by hand, but it's really convenient to program it. So let's see, look at the programming. What code would use, we use to do this? Now, uh, of course, you can use any code to write this. I'm going to take the example of using C and use the format of a do loop where we do we open curly brackets, we have some sort of code. Close the curly brackets for, for the end of that function. Then we say while, and then we have a condition in here. So let's say this is a condition. Okay. And so before we start, so this is for sort of structure we're going to use before we start the first thing is to say um, x high is equal to some value and x low is equal to some value then we can have a do loop and say x test is equal to x high plus x low over 2. Now we're going to find, now I suppose we'll just put a comment in. So what we need to do is test x test. So what we can simply do is say, if, now, I'm going to assume that we've got a function written for f of x, but let's say, so we can say f the function of x test is less than 
zero. Now I'm assuming again that we have the same sort of format as we had over here at the top left, where the low value is negative and the high value is positive. Um, so if the test value is low, then it's going to be the new value. So then what we say is um, let's see um, we say x low equals x test and we can say else and then x high equals x test and really that's all, all the, the logic there is to it we can now close the do loop and it will go back we've got a new value for x low and high and what we will do is go back up to here find a new value for x test check it see if it needs to be the low or the high and then go round again and keep going round, but we need to stop at some point. So what we need to do is say while, and I would say something like x high minus x low. Now we know that's going to be positive. Is greater than, let's say, not point not not not. Uh, not one. Now, of course, this number here is effectively a tolerance. It's how accurately you want to find your answer for f of x is equal to your x value, which gives you f of x equal to zero. And the smaller you make this number, the longer it will take to run, but um, uh, the more accurate your answer will be. At some point, you could make this number so small here that it um, that it, it would never finish the uh, program. It would be so small it, you'd be working to less accuracy than the computer could. You'd need more accuracy rather than the computer could work to. Okay, so this is um, a a way to find uh, a, a root of a function. Now. Uh, let's just uh, step back from it and look at a couple of disadvantages. One. If you, say, have a low value here and a high value here, and your function does this, then you will end up either finding this point or finding that point. You won't find both of them. So it's you've got to be aware that there can be disadvantages to this method. It's not good to use this blindly. It's important to know that you only have one crossing. Because if you have two crossings, you'd want to run two separate searches, one here, and one here to find your value. A second disadvantage is the Newton Raphson method is faster. It is much, much faster. But Newton Raphson needs um, d f by d x. So we need to be able to differentiate or we need to get f primed of x. Uh, we need to be able to differentiate the function to be able to use the newton Raphson method. And what this means is actually an advantage so the advantages are one here we don't 
need uh, f prime of x. We don't need um, to be able to differentiate the function. And following on from one, we can do some complex tests. For example, you could run a simulation and uh, check some error criterion. So for example, if there's some way that you can run a simulation and um, uh, a classic thing would be you're running a simulation and you want to test the time step. Delta T. So you could change your program. You could change it in this part here where you test the, um, the function. And you could change it. So that instead of just looking for an f of x value, you actually run a whole simulation or something and do one thing uh, if the simulation works or another thing if the simulation fails uh, to within whatever sort of error criteria you've set. Okay, so um, just to sum up, this is a look at bisection. We've been thinking about bisection, which is a numerical method to find uh, f of x, to find place where f of x is equal to zero.